Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a game schooling video on math. And this is a new series I wanna start on my channel, kind of going through some of the games that we play and just switching the subject up. So today is math, but we'll also be doing some, you know, maybe science and reading, writing type things and also geography. Hopefully, that's the plan. <laughs> so if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you different curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button. And let's talk about game schooling. So I have wanted to start doing a little bit of more game schooling with my kids, which if you don't know what that is, hopefully the name's sort of self-explanatory. <laughs> you're doing school you're doing like homeschool but you're doing it through games and so you might have some math games some reading games some different science games and just learning some people do this every single day and we don't do that we just do it on fridays usually that's kind of our break day but also if we want to go on a field trip day or game schooling day it's the catch all day <laughs> and so that's when we do our game schooling and so i try to pick something from every subject, you know, at least the main subjects, not every subject. <laughs> and we play a game on it and just have a lot of fun together and also my kids get to learn. So today I'm gonna show some of the math games we like to use. Since we're pretty new to game schooling, I don't have a ton of math games. This isn't completely comprehensive. And my kids are between the ages of like five and eight that are playing these games. I have a younger toddler, but she, she doesn't really play these games. <laughs> So that's kind of the age group that these are for as well. So if you have kids around those ages, stay with us because I think they're really gonna enjoy these games because my kids love them. So game number one is Sums in Space. My kids really just love this game too because it's in outer space. You know, it's just a fun like brain, not what's the word I'm looking for. It's a fun imagination type game. That's what we're looking for, imagination. You know, it just helps them kind of fantasy it's just a lot of fun for them so this game is really good because it is teaching addition or subtraction on every single turn it has three dice and two of them have numbers on them and one of them is a plus and a minus sign and so every turn they roll all three dice and then they set them up into a math equation so i really really love that part of it because it gets them familiar also with what a math equation looks like but then they're also doing addition or subtraction every single turn. And even my five-year-old is pretty good at this. Like it's very simple addition, subtraction. And so he has become pretty familiar with all the numbers and answers and, and does a really good job with it without a whole lot of help. And so that's a lot of fun. Another thing that I really like about this game is that it teaches about odd numbers and even numbers. And it's not the whole point of the game, but it is a big uh, part of the game. You know, it's an aspect of the game. <laughs> and so there's options when you roll, you might land on an odd or an even person in the game. I think it's, you know, one of these people, I don't know, even Stevens or something. They have, I think they have some fun names for them. But if you land on them, you get to roll one die again. And then if that die is, so you land on an odd space, let's say, if you roll the die and it's an odd number, then you get to move more those spots. But if you land on the odd space and you roll the die and it's an even number, then you don't get to go any further. That's as far as you get to go. So I really love this part of it because odd and even numbers are kind of a hard concept and we don't teach them as much in normal math curriculum. And so it's good to have something that reviews them. So I think that's a lot of fun. My kids also just love trying to get the little secret they're not secret, but <laughs> the passageways that help you advance a lot faster. So like shoots and ladders, you know, you hit it and you hit the ladder and you get to go up further. So these have those that kind of skip around. So you get to move through the game a little bit faster. <laughs> they don't always get them, <laughs> but they still, they still like to try. And then another fun part is there's the black hole towards the very end. And once you get to this black hole, everyone has to stop. And it has, you know, five or six spots that are inside this black hole and in order to get out or progress in this black hole there's a few different options so you have to roll over a 10 if you want to just completely bypass the whole black hole so once you get to the stop part if you roll a 10 
then you can get out or anytime in the black hole if you roll a 10 or more you can get out but inside the black hole if you keep rolling something nine or below you can only move one space no matter what your roll is so you can either be stuck in this black hole for a really long time or you might get out really quick and so i really like this because it teaches these different ideas of numbers like these groupings of numbers and it helps kids become more familiar with numbers that are less than 10 numbers that are more than 10 and things like that so sums in space is a really great game we really like it it's very simple and it's also pretty quick it doesn't take very long to play the game and so it's a fun just pull it out and play for a few minutes if your kids need something to do and a lot of times they can play it by themselves so number two is money bags and this is another really fun game we've only had it for a few months maybe like april march ish i'm not really sure and my kids really love it this is one of the games they reach for the most out of it out of all the games and that it's really fast as well and they can mostly play it by themselves it depends if my five-year-old's playing it's a little harder for him because you have to count money and he's not as good about he's not as good at doing that so I love this game because you are counting money and they're learning, they're becoming more familiar with you know quarters and dimes and nickels and pennies and seeing what they look like and what numbers they represent and things like that. But I also like it because it teaches skip counting. You know, when you have to count by fives or when you have to count by tens, you know, and ones they're pretty good at and then four quarters make a dollar, you know that. So they're learning these different math things that in a, in a fun way. You know, it's a little bit harder sometimes to teach it on a worksheet or it's boring, but this is a fun way to learn about it. So there's a few different options in this game, a few things you can land on. First of all, the game is shaped like a dollar sign, which I just think is cute. <laughs> but the options are you can land on something that has a money value. It's all in cents. You can land on a dollar sign or you can land on something that says change it up. So I just wanted to go over a few of these things because there's a few things about them that I really love. So if you land on money, not only, so you just roll one die and you move your person, the spaces, but that's not the only thing you do. There's a spinner involved in this game that when you spin it, you can either find, get to your money amount. So say it's like 33 cents or something, you can get to it using any coin or the spinner will tell you you can't use dimes, you can't use nickels, or you can't use quarters. So those are the four options, any coin or none of those other ones. <laughs> and so you get to spin that after you've rolled the die and moved your spot. And so the kids are thinking of different ways to make this amount, to make 33 cents. There's not just one way to get there, there's a few different ways. And I really like that about this game because it helps a lot in math later on to be able to look at a number and see it in a lot of different ways instead of just one way. So that's a fun part of this. The dollar sign, if you land on it, you just get to take the money out of the money bags pot, which is just one quarter nickel, dime, and penny. <laughs> and so that's fun for the kids. But then the change it up is another part that I really like about this game, because when you land on that one, you look at your coins and you see what you have that you could make a different coin out of. So my kids love to try to get dollar bills. There's dollar bills in the game, but you don't really use them very much except if you change in your money. So they try to get a dollar out of any of their coins. That's kind of their goal because <laughs> they think having dollar bills is really cool. But another part of it is, so if you have like two dimes and then a nickel, you know, that's also 25 cents. So you could change that into the bank and you could get a quarter back and then you also get 10 cents if you can make it make a change and so it's just a lot of fun to be able to see your money again in a different way and it's just a great game we have a lot of fun playing it my kids enjoy it and it's pretty quick and pretty easy okay. so number three is sequence numbers and sequence has so many different games and they're all pretty good i haven't played them all so i can't i can't completely say that <laughs> that they're all really good because i don't know for sure but the ones that we have played i have really liked and this one's fun it's a little bit longer than the other sequence games and i think part of that comes from you have to get five in a row and i don't know what it is this one just takes a little bit longer except for the other day <laughs> i know i say this but then the other day we got through it super quick i won in like 10 minutes which usually it's like 20 to 30 minutes at least and so i don't know how that happened i just ended up with the right cards and <laughs> was able to win where 
Usually that's not the case. Usually the whole board is almost full before somebody wins. So this one is a lot of fun and a few things that I really like about it is that the pictures are color code coded which is consistent with the sequence games they usually color code things but it doesn't mean that all the like if you had let's do 15 plus 4 you know it equals 19 and so all the both the 19s are going to be purple but there's also going to be other like 20 plus 5 that could also be purple so you could have 25s that are also purple but those would be the only numbers that are purple so when the kids have their card and their numbers on it are purple they can look out at the board and see all the purple solutions and know okay mine is going to be one of those solutions so if they're not as good at math or they're new to math they can still play and look at those those colors out there to try to figure out what the answer is so i think that's very very helpful in this game and my five-year-old is not the best at playing this game yet it uses some bigger numbers and it has small ones but it also uses big ones as well and so that's a little bit harder for him so usually he just kind of helps me and puts the chips out on the board when i play with everybody else so that's a lot of fun and something else that, that's great about this game is it teaches strategy not to young children well it does eventually obviously but my young kids are mostly just looking at the board and trying to figure out the math they can do my daughter looks at all of her cards that she has in her hand and picks the one that she knows the math <laughs> and then she does that one first you know she picks all of her easy cards first and then she gets to all the hard ones and has to like count and figure out what the answers are and so she's not really looking at the board trying to figure out okay maybe these ones will give me five in a row or if i put it in the corner i have the like free space in the corner and i can use that so it's a game of strategy but with young kids it's more of a game of just practicing math problems and trying to figure them all out so it's a really fun game again it takes a little bit longer so you can't just pull it out usually and just have it done really quick but we really enjoy the sequence games so the next one is prime climb this is a game that's newer to us as well and we haven't played it as many times but it has a lot of great benefits and things that it teaches as the name teaches prime club it teaches a lot about prime numbers and if, if you land on a prime number you get a special card so my kids are all going for for the prime numbers and the way that they know it's a prime number is the whole board is color coordinated so the prime numbers are all red and this game includes multiplication division addition subtraction which is really good because it is easy to adapt to younger kids and to older kids. So you have two dice, die, dice. I always am like, wait, what am I saying? Because growing up it was always dice no matter what. But now I'm like, oh, maybe I should pay attention. So you have the dice and you roll them and then you're gonna look at the board and you're gonna either multiply or add or subtract or divide <laughs> according to the number you're on but the colors on it help you out because when you multiply it takes the the color on the die so each number has a color associated with it as well and then the number on the board has a color associated it with it so when you put those two together then you can look for that number on the board and it's just really helpful for kids because then they can that my cut my kids half the time don't know the answer but they go they go look for the colors on the board and they're able to figure it out, especially when it's multiplication and that's just a little bit harder or division. So division takes away some of the colors. So, you know, you might start with green and red, but then if you take one of the numbers out that you're dividing, then it just leaves you with red. So I really like that aspect that it's all color coordinated and it's really great that it teaches a whole bunch of different math concepts and that it's easily adapted to to young kids and old kids. <laughs> and my kids ended this game the other day fighting <laughs> because their sister, you, you play games and you use some of the things to your benefit, right? You are able to switch players or you send them back home. So that's one of the things with this game, you can send them back to like home base and they have to start over again, which means more math practice, but also upset children. <laughs> and so you do things like that. And so she was really happy and dancing around and and they were they were not happy so we had to end the game a little bit early because they were getting upset so 
games help us learn how to control our emotions. It's a good thing, but it can sometimes be a little frustrating for them. But I really love this game and I would recommend it. So the last game that I have, the fifth one that I have is this, this is a little guy compared to all the rest of them. It says, I have who has question mark. And I think I got this from like teacher created resources or something. I'll link all these down below in my blog post so you can see them. But this one is a lot of fun. It's very simple and it's also, it's like travel size. You could probably play it in the car. I haven't. You might lose some cards in the seats or something, but you could play it in the car. But it also would be one easy to take with you. This is for grades one through two. <sighs> one through two, <laughs> first through second. That was weird. Anyways, and so uh, I think they have a few older ones. I don't know if they have something for kindergarten or for like pre-K, but so that's what age group this is. And my fifth grade, my fifth grader, <laughs> he's not in fifth grade, he's five. So my five year old, he played with us the other day and he was able to, he was able to do a pretty good job. And one of the reasons why is because there's four sets of cards. There's one that's addition, subtraction, and then you have patterns, and then you have greater and less than. I think those are the four. And so the patterns in greater than and less than are a little bit easier for younger children to play because there's not as much addition and subtraction and like bigger numbers that they have to try to know. It's a little bit easier. So like what number falls in between these two numbers? You know, sometimes they give a larger gap, like 10 numbers. So what number would be in between 50 and 60, <laughs> you know, and they have to figure it out. So what you do is you shuffle the cards first because I did not do that the first time and it was just two of my kids playing and so they just went back and forth back and forth whereas if you shuffle they might not go back and forth it might be one person's turn for a while and then the other because they're going to go through their cards and see who has the answer but you shuffle them you deal them all out to everyone and then there's a card that says like the first card or pick me first. I don't know what it is. It's not pick me first, but it's the one that goes first. And then at the bottom, you're going to read what it says. So let me pull out an example right here. So this is not the first card, obviously, but it would say I have the first card who has, you know, nine minus three. And so then the, per the rest of people in the game are going to look for their cards. And at the beginning, you have kind of a lot of cards, especially if you don't have that many kids playing. So my kids like to kind of lay them out so they can see all of them. And it doesn't matter if anybody else sees them, it's fine. <laughs> so they just lay them out so they can see them and then they just put them in the center and that's a lot of fun for them. But one of the things I really love about this game and that happened just the other day is that if you do not get rid of all your cards, you know you messed up somewhere. <laughs> and so you can go back and check. So my kids were like, oh, we're done because there's a card that says this is the last card or something like that. And I was like, well, you can't be done because you guys all have cards. <laughs> and so they, we had to go back through and see where they made the mistake. And then we re, you know, I gave them the rest of the cards that they had already put down that were not in the right order. And they kept going from there until they finished the right way. So it could be a pro and a con of this game that you can only play it one way, you know, through the whole game. There's not a variation it always goes in the same order but it also can teach kids the importance of checking their work to make sure things are right and that there's things that show up in our math that warn us that maybe we didn't do something right so we need to go back and see where we made a mistake so that's kind of one of the things this game is helping us learn as well so those are our five math games at the moment that we really like and enjoy and I hope that you like this kind of video. I would love to hear what games you guys like to play, even if it's for older kids, because I'm always looking for more games that's become like Christmas and Easter, like is games. That's what we get, games. <laughs> and so I would love to have more options for my kids. So please put your favorite games down below, any games, but math games are much appreciated. <laughs> and if you like these types of videos, please give us a thumbs up and I will see you next time.